Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to take a first look at this new flight controller here. Now for those of you that have watched the channel for a long time, the thing called Pixhook isn't going to be particularly new to you. In fact, you'll have seen lots of videos where I've put Pixhooks in all kinds of stuff, including planes, multi-rotors and all kinds of bits and pieces. Now the Pixhook itself is a family of technology originally developed by 3DR and the development has continued. But the original Pixhawks, the ones that you're buying today, are pretty much all going to be clones. Also looked at things like the Pix Racer, uh, which is a smaller version with some of the secondary electronics removed from it in an attempt to try and get the package a lot smaller. There's also been the Pixhawk Mini and then uh, the Pixhawk 3 Pro has been out as well. And now we have the Pixhawk 4. Now this is actually a product from Hollybro. Now I like Hollybro stuff anyway. Uh, you'll know from my videos if you watch the channel that I like their Kakute and other technology. In fact, the current quad build for beginner series is actually using Hollybro components inside and works fantastically well. So Hollybro seem to make pretty good stuff. Uh, and this is actually developed and made by those guys. So this isn't a clone in the traditional sense because it's actually been made and developed with the Pixhawk community. Now I've seen this cropped up in a number of places so if you're a Pixhawk fan then this will be interesting. So in this video what I want to do is quickly talk about the Pixhawk 4 itself, show you some of the specs and also get this thing out of the box so you can see what it is. I'm currently looking at the best platform to actually pop this in. I'd like to do a video showing you how to put it together. Uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward because all the stuff you need is actually inside this box. But a Patreon recently donated this monster here. This is a massive hex quad. Currently running DJI flight controller, uh, but I don't like that. Uh, but this could be the perfect thing to snap in there and replace it. So uh, I know lots of you have been asking me about doing some large multi-rotor stuff. And I think with this flight controller and that frame, this could make the basis for a really fun set of videos. Anyway, enough talking, let's get this out of the packet. So we'll break the seal on camera. So the first thing we have here is the new Pixhawk. This is actually a lot smaller than expected, but it looks like what they've done is they've done away with all of the PWM servo style connections on it. So it's only 85 by 45, thickness is about 10, a little bit of a bump there that's slightly thicker but that is a much smaller flight controller that's fantastic considering the bits and pieces that are inside here so we have the flight controller uh, we have the GPS and compass that's quite nice big LEDs on the side for GPS switch I'm guessing there's going to be a port on here that uh, you plug it into Yep, the one labelled GPS module. Fab, that was easy. Uh, we have a little manual that talks about what it is and how it works and the different pinouts. We have a power distribution board, which is a really nice idea. Uh, it means that the way that you can set this up and distribute power, particularly around something like a fixed wing craft, means that all of the power is going through the system, but not through the flight controller itself. Just take this out. I'll insert some images, um, higher quality images here in the video as well, so you can see what they look like. But that looks almost like it's a stackable piece, but it's not. The mounting holes on the bottom and the mounting holes for that are slightly different. We have the mount for the GPS itself, so that you can mount it away from all the electrical interference and everything else. And then we have a mahoosive bag of cables. Blind Charlie. Okay, so it looks like we have the PWM outs are actually on this board. Ah, okay, that kind of makes sense. So a lot of the heavy-duty wiring is all done on this part of the system, 
with the flight controller just being responsible for the flight bits and bobs and then we have uh, CAN bus extensions and everything else so there should be everything in here that we need with a little bit of soldering to pop those pins on I imagine to get everything working so let me just talk a little bit about what's new on this flight controller versus the other pix hooks that you may be already familiar with so here's a quick graph showing the difference between the frequency and the RAM. So basically the difference between the CPU power and also the amount of RAM that's in there going from the original PixHawk back on the left hand side and up to the new Hollybro PixHawk 4 on the right hand side. So you can see that everything has gone up which is the right direction. The more interesting one I think though is this slide here which shows the big difference. So we have an awful lot more RAM, 512 kilobytes of RAM compared to the 192 that was in the very first PixHawk. We have have twice as much flash. Uh, the flash was upgraded really halfway through the lives of the Pixhawks, so it's now got 248 kilobytes. PWM outputs 8 plus 8, two CAN buses, two I squared C, uh, two CAP, two power, and a little bit more expensive. Now I haven't seen the final price on this yet, uh, but we did look at the Pixhawk 2.1 recently, and that is a beautiful flight controller. We ended up putting that in another plane and the challenge for a lot of people was how expensive that PixHawk 2.1 is. I'd recommend going and have a look at that as well that's kind of the super granddaddy of this but this PixHawk 4 is taking an awful lot of those ideas it doesn't have the same vibration isolated IMU it doesn't have wacky stuff like the heating element inside the IMU so if you're operating it in cold environments but this has an awful lot more horsepower and there is another Hollybro flight controller that is called the PX4 that you'll find. Uh, the big difference is there are an awful lot more ports on this thing and you have this slightly larger lump at the front. So it's pretty impressive that inside this quite thin, it almost feels like the kind of thing that you carry business cards around in. It has a F7 based processor running at 216 megahertz, got two mega memory, 512 mega RAM, with some pretty modern accelerometers and gyros, magnetometers, a barometer in here as well. And it is unbelievably light. It says it's 15.8 grams, and I can believe it's under 16 grams, little USB connection on the side. So I just wanted to do a video and show you this little monster because this is something I'm really interested in because it is a very capable, very fast PixHawk platform, which I'm a big fan of anyway, but the size and the way it's laid out means that you can use it in a slightly different way from some of the other PixHawks. And the other big benefit for me is because it's made from somebody like Hollybro that I'm, I quite trust. I'm a big fan of Hollybro. Everything I've had from those guys just seems to be pretty bulletproof and work. I'm not putting a clone inside a model and potentially risking my model by somebody having a bad day and doing some crappy soldering. So join me in a video later on in the summer where we'll pop this inside something, set it up and get it flying. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.